All right, you guys, welcome back to some more Cafe Stella. We are still trying to figure out what the true story is behind the Aikawa Shrine. We've heard, I think, four different stories now. So who knows? I don't, certainly. But right now, we are heading over to Nozomi's school because apparently they're throwing out a bunch of books, and that just conveniently happens as we're looking for a book on the Aikawa Shrine. So we're going to head over there before they throw those out, you know, because I don't know why they're throwing out a bunch of books all of a sudden. Let's just go ahead and see if we can find one. It's been a while since Nozomi has put on, last put on her school uniform. We went back so she could change before we went to school. Yeah, and then they've been ho playing hooky from school for so many days. And then we, we just keep going back to school. You know, that's not weird. Otherwise, she'd stand out. Almost like, I'm going to stand out a little bit. I don't have a school uniform. Oh, thank goodness, we're not going. What do you mean, I'm coming with... Never mind. <laughs> if we're not together, the talisman won't be able to protect us both. Probably. Crap. In her regular clothes, Nozomi hadn't looked much different than any other student at college. But if I were to show up at Nozomi's school in my regular clothes, I'd stick out like a sore thumb. In fact, someone might even call the police. Yeah, I probably would on this guy, too. Well, alright, I guess I'll have to take this instead. Or you'll have to take this. Take out the talisman and then hand it to Nozomi. Oh my gosh, it's fine. It's just a butterfly, guys. Come on. Then consider yourself lucky. You don't have to be in this poor relationship anymore. Now I'm being mean to Kosei. It, they're rubbing off on me. <laughs> Terrible. Nozomi pushes the talisman back to me. You're the one who's being haunted. It's obviously better if you hold on to it. I'll be fine. You take it. I thrust the talisman back to Nozomi. <laughs> Gosh, we're back to last episode. Remember that? They were just like, here, you take it. No, you take it. No, you take it. They kept going back and forth over and over. Terrible. She pushes it back to me again. We're, we're back here again, guys. Back, back at it again. We come to a stop in the middle of the sidewalk, pushing the talisman back and forth. No, 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 it should be you. Why do y'all gotta make things so difficult? Dummy, dummy, dummy. This is getting us nowhere. Can't believe how stubborn you are. <laughs> They're running out of breath just trying to tell the other to take it. I'm running out of breath trying to talk about this. All this useless arguing has gotten us both out of breath. In any relationship, it's the man's job to shoulder the danger. Ask any couple you know. <laughs> You know, that's strangely romantic. I kind of like it. <laughs> she really does sound just like a mom. As I've come to expect from Nozomi-san. She's treating me like a helpless son. Fine, there's only one fair way to settle this. Rock, paper, scissors. If I win, you have to take the talisman while you're searching for books in the library. Okay, I mean, that's fair, I guess. But if you feel even the slightest bit of danger, I want you to call me right away. I'll come running as fast as I can. I'm well aware of that. For Nozomi's sake, I'm willing to take that risk. For the sake of love, I'm willing to besmirch the good name of Takamine Kosei. Uh, I hate to tell you, that was besmirched a long time ago. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. We clench our hands into fists at the same time. Oh gosh, what is it? I'm gonna beat you by fun. Oh! So she's using some, some psychology here. She's like, okay, I'm going to go paper. So you're, you're gonna go scissors, right? But I'm actually gonna go rock. 
That's 200 IQ knows me. I like it. Reminds me of uh, No Game No Life, where they do all the uh, rock, paper, scissors, and like they use a bunch of reverse psychology, and he pretty much says, hey, I'm just going to play paper, and then he only plays paper, but she keeps psyching herself out, thinking, oh, he's going to do this, well, he's going to do this, well, he's going to do this. He just plays paper. Oh, he does. What well, I'm just going to play scissors. He knows me smirks of confidence. She's playing mind games with me. In that case, she's probably playing to counter my scissors with rock. Which just means I need to counter her counter with paper. But wait, what if she knows I know her plan and she counters my counter to her counter with scissors? Yeah, this is just like the freaking no game no life. Gosh. Crap, I don't know what to think anymore. Wait, I still need more time too. Okay, Nozomi, let's just do it. I freeze, hesitating. Stop trying to trick me. No fainting allowed. <laughs> she smiles fearlessly. A sense of dread runs down my spine. I feel like I'm on a certain luxury liner. Enough messing around, just get on with it. So the trick here, right? Is, is you do the unexpected. So she's gonna go paper, right? Or scissors or rock or whatever. You just go tsunami, okay? You just mess with the game. Just play the most unexpected. I don't know if y'all did that as a kid, but like we did like tsunami and there was like, I don't know, like tornado or something. There was a whole bunch you could do. Final answer. Swear knows me is actually a middle-aged mom on the inside. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind going for a mom in the game. I feel like that could be fun, but I don't know. How does she even remember who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> Throw out scissors. Knows me, rock. <laughs> well, we tried, boys. We tried. Friggin' scuffed. Knows me pumps her fist into the air victoriously. I played right into her hands. Dang you, scissors, and dang me too. <laughs> Feels sad. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Uh, I wouldn't know that feeling. I mean, I just, I always beat my wife. Oh, oh, hey, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> I was gonna say I always win at games. That's all I meant. I promise. <laughs> I realized as soon as I said that how bad that was gonna sound. It's like, oh. <laughs> Hi. But uh, I won last night. Okay, I need to watch my words here. I won last night at a game called Carcassonne. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that. It's a board game, but it's really fun. And I and I won last night. I don't I don't let my wife win just because she's my wife. Okay. I play to win, and I won, so. I grab Nozumi's hand and head for the ticketing gate. She skips happily beside me as we walk. Seeing my chance, I slip the talisman stealthily into her bag. 200 IQ. All according to Keikaku. I turn to the side and stare villainously. Hehe, <laughs> it's my win, Nozumi. <laughs> A lot of references to things in here. That was definitely a Death Note reference, if I've ever seen one, but... Great. Putting on an expression of nonchalance, I pass through the ticket gate. Sorry, knows me. You'll have to forgive me just this once. I'm only doing this because I love you. A little while later, Nozomi returns safely from her school library with the book we've been looking for. In the meantime, nothing out of the ordinary happened to me either. Everything worked out fine. Well, almost everything. Ah, frick, we've been caught, boys. I have no idea, I must have just slipped. Facebook knows me as rap, I'm forced to stay on the ground in front of her. That's odd. Even though I have the talisman with me, I feel like I'm in extreme danger right now. <laughs> Don't ask me, I have no clue. Sometimes they just turn up where you least expect them, you know? 
Got a gloss over the situation. As we shout, slamming her desk with with her palm. What? I would never. No. How dare you accuse me? I feel like you would cry whether I did something or not. Come on now. I know you're not actually going to. Wait, you're seriously crying. Y'all, don't don't find yourself a woman who does this, okay? If she cries over the smallest things, don't do it. I'm literally the visual novel protagonist. I can't die, as evidenced by the fact that I've already died once and I didn't die, okay? Normally, people die when they're killed, but apparently we aren't, so... We have plot armor. Oh my gosh, I don't know how much more of this crying I can do. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, Nozomi. I quickly prostrate myself and apologize. Good grief. I love her, but she can be a real handful sometimes. <laughs> I do, and I'm sorry for betraying you like that. I know you were just worried about me. But you have to understand I was incredibly worried about you, too. I still shouldn't have tricked you, though. I'm sorry. I bow my head repeatedly to the floor. Oh, thank goodness. Now that we're out of that, can we, like, get back to the goal? Did you find out anything? I swear, if this goes... If this somehow slides into an H scene... Wrap my arms around her as well. Ba dump, ba dump, ba dump, ba dump, dum, ba dump, ba dump, dum. I can feel the beating of her heart through my skin. It's my job too, of course. After all, I love you. <laughs> ah, too close. I need, you know, six feet apart, right? Let out a strange yelp as she suddenly kisses my cheek. <laughs> You caught me off guard. Give me a bit of a warning next time. Gosh. Okay, fair enough. She did give us a warning. This time she kisses me twice. Once on the cheek and once on the neck. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but that was two. You said one. So... You know, th th that, that would surprise a person. My face grows hot with embarrassment. Yeah, I'm embarrassed to be with you. She peers into my face. Dang it, she's totally toying with me. Not wanting to meet her gaze, I turn my face away. Alright, that's enough. Show me the book you found. Uh, well, that was the whole point. No, I just want to start reading, that's all. Putting an end to the conversation, I turned my attention to the old book Knows Me Bard and began to read. The history of this town. The publication notes indicate that it had been written in April of 1868. Uh, I hope we're not, like, using a book that's from 1868. I feel like that thing's just gonna rip apart. Knows Me scoots in close so we can look at the book together. Yeah, even older than the ones we found in my college's library. There may be some new information in here. Akawa Shrine, Akawa Shrine. I flip each page with the utmost care. The paper is deteriorated enough as is. Too much force so I can easily rip it apart. Nice. Wow, it takes up an entire chapter. A surprising amount of text has been dedicated to the subject. Perhaps the shrine was a lot more famous back in the day. The woman, Akaiwa, had risked her life to protect her daughter from the clutches of a fearsome god. 
And so the villagers erected a shrine in her honor in order to appease Akawa's vengeful spirit. Interesting, okay. So that's... Yeah, it's, 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 it is indeed a little bit different. It's a terribly tragic tale. Reading it had left an unpleasant aftertaste in my mouth. After finishing the rest of the chapter, I closed the book. A heavy weight had settled in the pit of my stomach. I mean, I don't know. I, we don't really have anything else to go off of, so. It's the oldest account of the story we could find, and more importantly. Are you saying you're the god of this shrine? God killed you here. Wait, so she had her daughter taken away, and we don't have a daughter, but we do have a girlfriend. Is he trying to steal my girlfriend? Is that what I'm hearing right now? The audacity. そうか。well, I think the distinction here is that it's not the god, it is a god. She had fought back against the fierce god using her immense power of her soul. She had tried to change the world, tried to defy the will of the gods to prevent them from taking her daughter. Which means... Red Butterfly must be waiting for the return of her abducted daughter. It all makes sense. Like, where are we going to find her abducted daughter? Let's calm down for a minute, Nozomi. I give my teary-eyed girlfriend a gentle hug. I wanted to do something to help her too, but like Shiki-san said, this happened more than 300 years ago. Her daughter would have passed away a very long time ago, and her soul reincarnated into another human being. Or just another being in general. Even if we wanted to search for her. I mean, is it possible she's a butterfly? I mean, the red butterfly was attracting a lot of other butterflies, right? Probably trying to find her daughter. That is a very long time. I, I do concur. <laughs> Please don't start crying again. At least it's not me this time. Or because of me. Knows me sobs into my chest. She's crying not for herself, but for someone else, for the red butterfly. Despite everything, knows me pities her. I stroke her head and her back. Such a kind person knows me. I've always known that, but it's clear to me now more than ever. I'm sorry, though. This is all I can do right now to comfort you. Sorry for being such a useless boyfriend. But we still have time. Not a lot, but some. I'll do whatever it takes to see you smile. So please, don't cry. Huh? My own voice is getting choked up. Men can cry too, okay guys? Let's normalize that. Nozomi softly strokes my cheek with her finger. A clear drop of liquid had wet her fingertip. Crying for myself, because I have to deal with so many other people crying. You know, sometimes you just need to cry too. Well, I feel bad for the red butterfly too, of course, but... Embarrassed, I stay silent. But the silence is answer enough. 
Don't be, cry baby or not, I love you. Ooh, is she gonna remember our promise we made? Not like I could leave you alone now, could I? Finally, you're smiling again. Glad to hear it. Is this going where I think it's going? I placed my hand against her ample chest. You know, here we're supposed to be helping Aikawa, okay? And th these two are just young and have nothing else on their mind other than one thing, okay? Like, can y'all focus on something for more than 10 minutes? Yeah, dot, dot, dots, we get it. Cafe Stella to Shinigami no Cho. Forgot to turn on this light. I'm like, I need a little bit more light in here. Ah, so we are in chapter 8, so... I wonder if that means... It, do we have chapter 8 and then there's a chapter 9? I've heard, like, it goes from, like, chapter 5 through 9. I don't know. The wet butterfly has been waiting for the return of her abducted daughter for over 300 years. The next morning. Knows me and I report our findings to Akazuki-san and Mikado. Why would she be trying to harm Nozomi? I mean, I get that, but still. Akizuki-san voices the same doubts that Nozomi and I shared. I mean, I wouldn't even say it's a grudge. Like, never did she mention anything about wanting revenge on the god who took away her daughter. She just wanted to see her daughter again. That, that's all really I got out of that. Shimi Morio to it demo yoi sonsaida. Kito Azamuk Kotonado. Kutsuno Ningen that they dekiru koto de I mean, that's true, but do you really want to go around in life trying to find the worst in somebody? Do you always want to look for where they're lying to you or deception? Or do you want to at least give people, at first, you know, the benefit of the doubt, right? I just feel like it'd be kind of a sad existence if you're just always looking at the worst in somebody and always just wondering where you're going to find fault in them. I mean, that's just, that's just kind of judging them for no reason, right? Well, I don't know. I disagree. But the fact is, Nozomi has been put in danger twice, and she's been haunted by the red butterfly the entire time. All the evidence points in one direction. Well, eventual spirit or not, if we're going to give the red butterfly what she's been looking for, what... Would that finally put her to rest? I know, but what if we find the person she reincarnated into? Even if she's in a different body, her soul must still exist somewhere on this earth now. I know, she could be a sea barnacle or a water flea. So, would you be willing to try and find her? It was the fierce god's fault, god's fault, that Akaiwa became a vengeful spirit in the first place. The red butterfly is just a victim, I want to save her. Yeah, she got big screwed over. Those me bows her head to the other two. Mikado-san, so not to 
Yeah, Kana is definitely the more compassionate person here over Mikado. He's just always looking at the worst. Yare yare. Mata konya wa tetsuya ka. Yare yare. Hmm. Kono kari wa takai zo. Takamine kousei. You know, I'm already working tons of shifts here anyways because I have to repay favors to other people. So why not? Let's let's just add on to the list of things I owe other people. Even though I don't know if I really should owe you anything. But, you know, this is kind of his job. Freaking cats. I'll give you a nice grooming. Knows me holds up a rather expensive looking cat brush. Where'd she even get that from? <laughs> he changed his tone on that rather quickly. No hesitation at all. He looks dead serious too. Sorry for asking so much of you. I mean, that's pretty impressive that you can find a 300-year-old spirit that got reincarnated at all. I mean, so if you can do it by Sunday, that's pretty impressive. So when the talisman's protection runs out and we confront the red butterfly for the second time, Mikido's tone takes on a faint but sharp edge. I know my number one priority is still Nozomi's safety. If our plan fails and the red butterfly continues to haunt Nozomi, I don't want to say it, but I force the words out nonetheless. Then please eliminate her. There's nothing for you to feel guilty about, Nozomi. I take full responsibility for this decision. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to budge on this. If this is a sin, then it's my sin to bear. bow deeply well i mean i feel like that's fair they they do need to get rid of her from the world just because she can't stay here forever she's causing problems but uh i mean we're, we're doing the right thing we, we are trying she can't say we didn't try nobody seems on the verge of saying something but in the end unable to bear her thoughts into words she closes her mouth Listen, Nozomi, eliminating the Red Butterfly will only be our last resort. But until then, we have no other option. We're going to try our best to save her. Place a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. <laughs> At last, she seems to cheer up a little. Well, good luck with that. I have no idea how you'd even go about doing that. But, you know, you two are probably the best to do that. If anybody could, it would be these guys. Freaking, what do you think I've been doing? Gosh. Where am I going to find another library that seems to be closing and throwing out older books? I'm just going to magically find the book for it? Freaking, that's what I've been doing. Agreed. Out of all of us, Nozomi is the one who's most concerned about the Red Butterfly, even though she's the one being haunted by her. She truly is a kind girl, almost to a fault. Oh, Nozomi pulls out her phone and swipes across the screen. Oh, I wonder if he remembered something. Okuro-san, what did he say? Huh. Well, that's kind of a problem then. We can't stick together anymore. When we pass by the shrine, Rokuro-san comes out to greet us, smiling. Welcome back, Rokuro-san. Did he manage to get that truffle business resolved? Yeah, I suppose. Ah, frick. <laughs> oh, uh, er... Crap. <laughs> Occupied with the Red Butterfly, Nozomi and I had spent the past several days absent from class. But we've forgotten to come up with a suitable excuse. I look to Nozomi for help. Don't worry, I'll improvise my way out of this. Just follow my lead, Kosei-kun. Nozomi communicates to me using her eyes. 
Wow, that's a pretty unique skill. Ask her silently. All women are born actresses, didn't you know that? <laughs> Feast your eyes, my flawless acting skills. <laughs> okay. I don't know exactly why, but she seems extremely sure of herself. Well, let's see what she can do. Wow. Truly a flawless actor. Like blew my mind. She's like the next Angelina Jolie. You call that flawless acting? First of all, that was an awful lie. Rokurosan would know if you had some kind of condition. There's no way he's gonna buy that. <laughs> of course he buys it. <laughs> he bought it. Rokurosan, you trust your daughter way too much. You sound like you're drunk. What? Cringe. <laughs> so cringe. I was almost impressed with how unconvincing that was. Also, I'm pretty sure hiccups don't qualify as a condition. I simultaneously love and hate this game. Sometimes it's great, and then other times I'm just like, bruh, really? <laughs> well impressed, aren't you? You had no idea I was a cunning liar, did you? No, I had no idea you were the worst liar in the world. Nozomi throws one last smug look over her shoulder as her dad drags her away. I'm impressed, alright. Impressed you had the guts to think you could fool anyone with a performance like that. Well, I guess it all worked out in the end. At any rate, now Nozomi has an excuse to take a break from school until Sunday. That is if her parents will find out she's lying. Anyways, now that I'm alone, I head towards the shrine grounds. Yeah, nothing here. I come through every nook and cranny of the shrine office, looking for a book, a document, and anything that could tell me more about the shrine's history. I searched for most of Nozomi's house as well, but I found nothing. Thus, I come to the conclusion that this was the only place in that Kaiwa shrine left to search. So, if he searched the whole shrine, I wonder if he found Rokuro's anime body pillows. Because I know those exist. They do. You know, that's got to be their... What, what was it? Their sacred treasure. Oh, here's something. Looks like an old scroll. The moment I pick it up, it kicks up a cloud of dust. The parchment is tattered and musty. I unfurl it gently, careful not to tear it. This is entirely in ancient Japanese, and it's written in cal cal calligraphy. Okay, I was like, trying to get the right word out. Like, I know how to say that, I promise. I can't read a word of this. I found out the flowing brush... Frown at the flowing brush strokes, struggling to decipher them. While I'm busy poring over the scroll, Nozomi suddenly pokes her face into the office. Oh, Nozomi, recovered from your chronic condition already? Wow, that's crazy. No wonder you were never sick in the first place. Well, good for you, but try not to worry your dad too much. Ah, frick. That's not good. Nozomi wraps her arm around herself and begins to shiver. I want to rush over to her immediately, but I can't. Oh, frick. Something just knock us out? Stabbing pain pierces my chest and I find myself unable to breathe. Back into a cold sweat, I collapse to the ground, coughing violently. Well, frick. Hopefully we absorbed a few butterflies so we don't die. Nozomi calls out to me, blood draining from her face, but I can't see her. My vision is darkening. No, this isn't black. Red? Nozomi, I see red. <laughs> Frick, I didn't think we would die again, guys. From the sound of her sobs, the feeling of her hand grabbing mine, I could tell that Nozomi is crouched beside me. I made her cry. I, I have to protect her. I want to protect her, but I I can't. <laughs> Nozomi's voice was growing distant. Why? Why is this happening? I flash back to those moments before my last near-death experience. I'm not gonna die here. Things are different this time. I have someone I want to protect now. 
I'm not going to die. I'm not going to rewind time again. I'm going to stay alive in this world with Nozomi. <laughs> My consciousness is fading. Grasping Nozomi's hand, I have one final thought. Please, please don't cry. Rick, did we seriously die again? Like, what the heck? I wasn't expecting that. Oh, okay, good. It seems like we're okay. Yeah, I feel fine, strangely enough. Yesterday, I apparently had a heart attack and was rushed to the hospital. Oh my gosh. Uh, I told I was hovering between life and death for a while, but by the next evening, I regained consciousness and my body was completely stabilized. Test results had shown nothing out of the ordinary. Although the doctors were dumbfounded, they eventually agreed to let me get, go home. I don't think it was her, though. <sighs> Our expression is darker than Mikido's words. Nozomi and I want to save that red butterfly, but this felt like she had trampled all over our goodwill. Well, to be fair, who had the talisman right there? Because, I mean, Nozomi was, wasn't was around for a good bit. I don't know, she could have, like, affected us before that. Hmm. You're going to eliminate the red butterfly today. I had a feeling that was the case when these two showed up undisguised. Yeah, but we still haven't found our daughter, though. But there's an authority in her voice that brooks no argument. Right now, she is on the usual friendly Akazuki san we know at work. She's a Grim Reaper on a mission. Well, we might as well all go. I feel like I'd be safer, you know, with a Grim Reaper and then some kind of cat noble guy. Nozomi's voice is somber and her eyes gleam with repressed tears. I can tell this pains her. She truly wanted to help the Red Butterfly even now. But after I nearly died, she made up her mind, stifled the, the kindness in her heart. Wait a minute. The words slipped from my mouth. Please just give me a little more time before I even realize it. Well, hey, it's my life. It's now or never. I'm not going to live forever, okay? Just let me do this, guys. I got this. Oh my gosh, I'll be fine. But you felt sorry for the Red Butterfly, didn't you, Nozomi? You said she didn't deserve to be killed and have her daughter taken away. You pitied her. You wanted to save her. Then don't give up. I know you're a kind person. The kindest there is. Ask me to help. Say Kosei-kun, do something. I blurted out my true feelings. If the Red Butterfly were to be eliminated in cold blood, Nozomi would surely be scarred for life. Can't let that happen. <laughs> I still have no idea how this is gonna end. We're back to the crying again. Knows me, hugs me, crying into my chest. Softly, I stroke her head. I don't want her to cry. I want to see her smiling, so I'll do everything in my power to make that happen. Mikido, Akuzuki-san, were you able to learn anything about the Red Butterfly's daughter? Okay, then why don't you wait? We know she just wants to see her daughter, so let's grant her that wish. If we do that, her attitude might soften toward us. She might even be willing to be reincarnated. 
現世では人に転生していることまでは調べられたんですが居場所の特定も必要だやはり明日の夜になってしまうぞお前たちその間どうやって身の安全を I don't know. I still think maybe her daughter's Nozomi. I feel like that's just the logical conclusion here. I don't know who else it would be. Would you be willing to stay with Nozomi until tomorrow night? Going up with you guys later. There's something else I need to do first. Oh, here's something. Looks like an old scroll. Entirely in Japanese, and it's written in calligraphy too. I can't read a word of this. Something about the scroll that bothered me. The moment I picked it up, Christ said, "Struck." It couldn't have been a coincidence. I, asked, I have to ask Rokuro-san what was written in it. Well, it's our only lead, so maybe so, but I don't want to leave any stone unturned. I'll do whatever it takes to resolve things peacefully tomorrow. Whatever it takes to keep Nozomi from crying. Oh, that's a great idea. You, can, I, you and I can just stay over at Nozomi's house for tonight. That way, Nozomi and I will both have Akazuki san's protection. It's a perfect solution. I reflexively pump both fists into the air. Yeah. I believe in you, Mikado. <laughs> I put on a show of confidence, flashing my bright smile and a thumbs up. <laughs> I mean, we might as well. This is the best, like I said, the best lead we have. I mean, don't really know anything else to do. Mikado reluctantly agrees. Thank you, Mr. Cat. You're the best support summon a guy could ask for. He's S tier. Yeah, I'm fine. Your daughter gave me her chronic disease, you know, and it kind of like acted up and almost killed me. The moment Rokuro-san spots me, he drops his broom and comes running over. From the look of things, he seems to have been rather anxious about me. Yes, I'm completely fine now. I'm sorry for making you worry. Bow my head politely. Oh, how convenient. I feel like this route is full of convenient things. I'd appreciate it. Oh, and speaking of which... Or I can ask Nozomi tactfully finishes my sentence for me. Oh, you're Rokuro-san, there's something I'd like to ask you. I have a few questions about the old scroll I found stored in the shrine office. Rokuro-san's expression grows troubled. Yeah, now I'm curious what's written on it. Hmm. That's something to do with Lady Akawa and the origins of the shrine. Please, Rokuro san. The three of us bow our heads. Alright, sounds fair. We relocate to the Sumizome's living room. There, Rokuro-san begins to tell us the truth about the legend of the Akawa Shrine. Okay. その娘の生まれ変わりの巫女が現れ、お払いをし、神社を建て怒りを沈めた。つまりこの神社を建てた私たちの祖先は赤岩様の娘が転生された方なんだ。Interesting. Okay. This is a considerably different story from the one Rok
And he's right, it certainly is bloody. Hardly an appropriate legend for a shrine where people pray for safe childbirth, but it seems that the key point for both Lady Akaiwa and the Red Butterfly is still her daughter. After listening to the rest of Rokuro-san's story, I immediately give Mikido a call. We need to talk about tomorrow night. I was wrong, the Red Butterfly isn't waiting for her daughter. Oh. Okay, uh, that's a little bit of a twist. Well, are they going to tell us what happened or not? <laughs> Quietly knows me, we, we don't want to wake your parent. Quietly knows me, we don't want to wake your parents. Having been changed into her shrine maiden outfit, Nozomi softly closes the door behind her. It's the following day, late at night. After Nozomi's parents fall asleep, we slip out of the house. <laughs> Nozomi can't. Nozomi can hide her apprehension. Understandably, of course. But I have faith in her. I think it was supposed to be she can't hide it. I don't know. You're the only one who can do this, Nozomi. Nozomi hangs her head. She's clearly anxious. I place my hands on her shoulders. I'll be right here with you, Nozomi. Uh, hopefully not. Nozomi interrupts me angrily. Well, someone's trying to for cheering her up. Oh, no, I totally forgot about that. It wasn't like a life-threatening experience or anything that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Nope, I forgot about it. Well, no, that's the point I'm trying to make. I'm willing to die for you. Oh, my cat is, like, sleeping behind me. She's so cute. I don't want to hear you say that ever again. She balls her hands into fists. All right, all right, I get it. I'm sorry. Knows me pouts, muttering under her breath. I'm sure that's how the story will end. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if they get engaged or married or something. I feel like that's where the route's going. We have to fulfill that promise, right? <laughs> Dang, Mikido. It's true, but you didn't have to say it, okay? Shut up. I'm already being treated like a henpecked husband. Okay, fine. I, I, I won't die. That's fine. Nozomi steals her expression and begins walking towards the shrine grounds. Any initial hesitation she had was gone. Instead, it had been replaced by a fierce determination. Well, she's grown as a person. You know, that's nice. Oh my God. <laughs> I like look back and my cat sneezes at the same time and it scares me so bad. And I was like, oh my gosh. Because I kept hearing something, and I'm like, what is that noise? I thought somebody was, like, in the room or something. Oh, my gosh. Well, okay, then. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Nozomi realizes it now without a doubt. We should go, too. It's almost done. Oh my gosh. I feel like my heart's still going a little bit. That just, like, freaked me out. All right, yeah, let, let's 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 begin. <laughs> Akazuki song quietly begins to chant a litany of words from a world completely unknown to me. As she does this, I feel the temperature around us dropping by degrees. It's almost time. As before, a sound like cracking ice echoes throughout the shrine grounds. Konbanwa. Before us, the large, translucent butterfly materializes once again. Tonight, her voice is clear and distinct from the very start. Nozomi seated on her knees gives the butterfly a polite bow. Ah. So I was right. You, you heard it in the video. I was right. 
気づいてしまいましたかやっぱりそうなんだね正確には300年前にそうだったということですが正しい伝承を知ってしまえば実に単純なことだった Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that hard to guess, but I'm still happy I got it. この神社を建てお主の怒りを沈めた巫女の生まれ変わりならはい再び赤岩神社の巫女として生まれ変わるのはもはや必然と言えますあなたが赤い蝶が未だにここに留まっているのですから That was one part of the truth. The Akawa shrine had been built by her reincarnated daughter in order to quell her mother's anger at having been killed by a fierce god. But since her mother's soul had yet to be saved. Nozomi's ability to sense the supernatural must have originally stemmed from her desire to sense her mother's soul. I'm sure that subconsciously, she had always been yearning for her mother, always been searching for her soul. In doing so, she sometimes found herself sensing other spirits as well, or at least that was my theory. Lady Akaiwa, this time, it's my turn to speak to her. First, let me offer you my gratitude. Thank you for saving my life not just once, but three times. Yes, until just recently, we thought you were haunting Nozomi, but we thought that you were haunting me as well because of how close I was to her. お母さんは私や後世君を守ってくれていた。300年前、お母さんを殺めた基準。え。私が神に殺された理由はその少年と同じなのです。私は先天的に強い力を持った魂を有していました。世界をねじ曲げることさえ可能なほど。In fearing that power, God took your life, but that's not all. Your daughter possessed a powerful soul of her own, and so even took her life as well. When I say this, the red butterfly's wings tremble faintly. You let your anger consume you, and as a result, your wrath even affected those around you. Ultimately, the one who quelled your anger was the shrine maiden who built the Akaiwa shrine, your reincarnated daughter. Her transparent crimson scales dance in the moonlight. To me, it almost seems, it almost seems like she's shedding tears. According to the true legend, the story went like this. The shrine maiden who built the shrine also possessed a powerful soul of her own. In order to prevent a repeat of the same tragedy, you made a deal with God. You vowed never to use your powers again on the condition that your daughter be left alone. In exchange, God would not take her life, but would seal away a portion of her soul. While only a portion of her soul had been sealed, though, there were consequences. The sudden weakening of her soul affected her body as well, and shortly thereafter, your daughter fell to illness. Having failed to protect her, you were overcome with grief, and to this day, you remain enshrined within the Akaiwa Shrine. That was what the legend said. Wagahai Tachiwa, Saisho, Onushiwa, Umareka, the Musumeto no Saikai, or Negat the Yuto Motita. Yeah, so that technically was already fulfilled. I mean, she had been with her daughter probably countless times. Daga, so they were Nakata. Onushiwa, Nozomiga, Musumeno, Umareka, Rito, Shite, Tano, the Karada. Anata, Musumega, Jibunto, Najibatsu, Kirikoto, Osoreta. So no Tori, this. Although part of her soul has been sealed away, Nozomi still inherits her power, doesn't she? But when Nozomi and I started developing feelings for each other, things changed. My soul, which had the ability to absorb butterflies to grow more powerful, threatened to release Nozomi's seal. Worse yet, there was a possibility that I might have been begun absorbing her sealed powers too, and that's why. It was actually you who saved me, wasn't it? Akazuki-san and Mikita shake their heads. Why didn't you tell us back then? Yeah. 
It's kind of sweet in its own way. Nosebee's voice begins to tremble. By now, the eastern sky is growing light. In the still morning air, the voices of both mother and daughter quiver with emotion. Okay, well, I mean, to be fair, you got reincarnated. How are you supposed to remember that stuff? I feel like this is like, how many times can Nozomi cry in one video? Nozomi wails loudly. The red butterfly dances slowly around her as if to comfort her. She really is a god. She's Lady Akawa, the benevolent god who watches over children. That's alright. Sure. That's why you saved my life. Facing the red butterfly, nod deeply and say, I promise to marry her and make her happy. Hmm. Sounds like a, a Rick Astley song. Right, as long as I'm with Nozomi, I'll be happy. And I'll protect her myself. I won't rely on any miracles. I'll protect her with my own hands and make her happy. Okay, well, I wouldn't say any harm won't come to me. I mean, the things just happen in life, right? But maybe not any uh, divine harm. Bathed in the glow of the morning sun, the red butterfly's wings appear to melt into the light. Almost completely vanished now, the butterfly flutters nimbly throughout the ground. <laughs> Rising to her feet, Nozomi begins to dance. As does the red butterfly, mother and daughter together. <laughs> I open my eyes wide, etching the scene into my memory. I don't even want to blink. The first and last dance between mother and daughter in 300 years. I'll never forget the sight as long as I live. 
Red Butterfly's wings grow steadily more transparent. Before long, only the faintest outline can be seen until... Farewell. With the final word of parting, the gentle butterfly leaves this world behind. Even then, Nosumi keeps dancing, in tribute to her mother. She continues to dance beautifully, elegantly, as majestically as a shrine maiden of legend. The daughter receives her mother's love and passes it on to the next generation, from mother to child and on to her children's children. I've come to understand something now. People live forever. Even long after our bones turn to dust, our love endures. The bells on her fan twinkle brightly, a tranquil, soothing sound that washes away all sorrow and anger. She hears it, too. I'm certain she does. Wherever the gentle red soul is now, she hears you. Ooh, well that's all the non-combustible garbage. After graduating college, I began working full-time at the Akaiwa Shrine. This year, I'm going to be taking over for Rokuro-san as the new Shrine Priest. I can't believe it's already been five years. I think back to the day the Red Butterfly had vanished. Even after becoming a working adult, I continued living in this apartment. Looking around, it feels like nothing has changed since then. But in reality, a lot has changed. For example... <laughs> Ooh, I wonder where we're going. Nosy looks exasperated when she sees what I'm staring at my tablet screen. Why not? It's one of my fond one of our fondest memories. Hey, I'll be fine. There's still three days before we move. Dang, that, that sounds like me. I feel a little personally attacked right now. Alright, alright. I put the tablet down and stand up. Oh, that's a cute picture. I love it. I gotta say, though, you haven't changed one bit. Not young so much as childish. I wonder if we got married. It's a compliment, I swear. Childish brides forever. Shrine maiden wives are the best. <laughs> uh, a little bit. I'm not, honey, she said. It's been a year since we got married. What? They didn't even show the wedding! What the heck, game? Okay, I thought we were, like, about to get married. That's why we're, like, moving, you know? In three days' time, we'll be moving to the Kaiwa Shrine into Nozomi family's home. It's true, I've become the Sumizome's adopted son-in-law. Say Nozomi. Try calling me Kosei-kun, it's been a while. Oh my gosh, it's fine. Come on, just once. I wrap my arms around her waist. Because you were my childhood friend, what do you mean? not forcing you to do anything. I just really want to hear you say it. As I tangle playfully with my wife, a thought suddenly crosses my mind. I think about the red butterfly now so far away. Nozumi. Let's live our lives to the fullest to be happy, and one day we'll share that happiness with others. That's what we were born on this earth to do. I smile, stroking my wife's head. Well, this is weird. Inexplicably, I feel tears welling up in my eyes. Nozomi squeezes my hand tightly. You're a good girl, Nozomi. I chuckle through my tears. I suppose. Please, Nozomi's hand in return. My wife's soft voice echoes through the morning air. Far, far, far away beyond the vast sky. Carrying our desire for happiness to where the benevolent mother watches over us from above. Hmm. Well, that was short and sweet. Oh, it has nose of me on the front. I love it. Well, you know, I guess that was her route. Uh, pretty good. I mean, I would say. I would say there's definitely moments that were way better than others. I feel like 
we kind of had this middle section where it was like really slow and i feel like they could have like cut out some of that but that's just me but i like the parts where like there was actually stuff going on i love the date at mouse land that was great um all the build up to the shrine festival was pretty good i liked when they actually like put it on uh and we got to see her like serving the the crepes that that part was cool i liked when she actually did the dance that was nice and then I liked this kind of last stretch up into uh, solving everything. I, I liked that a lot. I, I don't know. I would have cut out maybe just a little bit of in-between time for things. Maybe, like, got the plot going a little bit more. I do feel like some of the writing was a little bit lazy. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Like, there was a lot of stuff that was just like, oh, convenience. You know, like, oh, you know, you're looking for this? Well, oh, this happens to be happening right now, and you should go check it out. Like with the the library, right? Like they're throwing out all those old books and I just so happened to have something we needed. I don't know, just very convenient. I'm like, uh, I don't know. It's not the best writing in the world, but overall not too bad. I think for the childhood friend, uh, I don't feel like most people consider the childhood friend to be like their favorite girl. So, you know, she doesn't need the best route, but I thought it was really sweet. So, uh definitely i would say a good route i wouldn't say a great route i wouldn't say the best route but it was it was good it was it wasn't bad so uh i would say that but i like the little epilogue i wish they would have made that longer i i i was originally trying to record that as its own video because i thought it was gonna be much longer um but you know it seemed to be pretty short so anyways guys i am planning on doing maze route next i think that's what we're gonna do do Maze, then do Suzune's, uh, and then we're going to do Natsumi's, and then Kano's. I think that's the route we're going to do. And then I'm assuming there's a true end, so we'll do that afterwards. But uh, I know I know Suzune's route's much smaller than this. I think it's only like two hours or something, so we'll see. Uh, I don't know if every route's going to be ten hours. I mean, this was pretty long. This is kind of crazy. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed that. I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.